Healthy chef Phoebe Lapine is joining us now to tell us about her own journey with SIBO. Phoebe, great to have you back with us. Yes, I'm so excited to be talking about SIBO today. I love nerding out about this stuff. So Phoebe, tell us, uh, has changing the way you're, you're eating really changed your life? Yes. And I have to say, back when I was researching my last book and all about Hashimoto's, I was living by a lot of that large intestine advice. And I was eating things that were just making my, me miserable. So what was really interesting about SIBO is that I fully then understood kind of how the entire digestive system works as a well-oiled machine. And I have to say, while what you're eating is obviously important, after treatment, I felt like it was really the ways I was eating, the how of how I was eating that made the big difference. So, you know, certain things like spacing out my meals to give, you know, time for my intestines to kind of street sweep and clean up after themselves, um, revving up my stomach acid, which, you know, of course, neutralizes unwanted bacteria that comes in through the nose and mouth, and then just chewing, you know, really common sense stuff that we don't talk about enough. So, so important. All right. You've got some things you want to show us here today. Let's start with a sip you make of a SIBO friendly, I love this drink, Arnold Palmer. Yes. So during any period of gut healing, I advise limiting caffeine and added sugar as much as possible. So for this Arnold Palmer, I'm replacing the black tea with a fresh hibiscus tea made from these petals. Then, of course, fresh lemon juice instead of, you know, a store-bought lemonade and just a little bit of maple syrup to give it some sweetness. And hibiscus is an incredible ingredient. It's used in a lot of ancient medicinal traditions across the globe. It's great for lowering blood pressure, balancing your blood sugar, helping your liver function better. It's also a digestive aid, especially for those with constipation. And so when you combine it with fresh lemon juice it's great first thing in the morning to help your liver kind of flush out all the toxins and then the lemon juice itself is antimicrobial so if you're trying to get rid of you know unwanted critters in your small intestine a great ingredient to add and i can show you really quick how to do this concentrate you just want to take some petals and if you can't find them you can just buy hibiscus tea making sure that it doesn't have any additives and then we're just going to add some boiling water which will also help dissolve the maple syrup and you basically just let this steep for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. And at the end, it looks like this. And we're just going to add our lemon juice to this, to that kind of mapley hibiscus water. And then you can just water it down slightly to make it stretch a little bit further. And I just keep this, especially during warmer months, in the fridge and sip on it first thing in the morning and throughout the day. I wish I could try it. All right. Yeah. Next up, sounds delicious. Tell us how you make your sweet potato chili. Now, our producer made this and said it was absolutely fantastic. I'm going to have to give, give it a shot myself. So take it away, Phoebe. That is great to hear. So, you know, as Dr. Pimentel mentioned, beans and legumes and garlic and onion are particularly problematic ingredients for those with IBS and SIBO. So in theory, chili is really not your dish, but I tried to, you know, reinvent the wheel a little bit here and go rogue. We're using Moroccan spices. I start by sauteing some bell pepper instead of onion, and then you can use any type of ground meat. I have lamb in the book, but I used beef in this version last night because it's what I had on hand. And then to bulk it up without all the beans, I'm using sweet potato and a lot of frozen kale, which just kind of melts away in the mixture. And then I am using a low FODMAP gut-friendly quantity of chickpeas. You can completely omit them if you're sensitive. Everyone's kind of different, but this is a fourth of a cup. And, you know, for the entire batch of chili, I only use one cup versus, you know, normal chili recipes, which probably uses about eight cups of legumes. And, you know, you, it's really much easier to tolerate in that way. And I garnished it with some fresh cilantro and a good little onion sub hack. You can use the green parts of scallions and then some lactose for yogurt. All right. Thank you so much, Phoebe. Always a pleasure. Thank you. All right. For these recipes and more, check out Phoebe's book at thedoctorstv.com.